Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the opportunity to appear here. I want to say a couple of things. First of all, I applaud the Budget Committee uh, and your Chairman for focusing uh, much needed attention on the fiscal, uh, in, in, uh, the fiscal crisis in our country. Number two, I applaud the new majority. Uh, they ran on a, a, a commitment and a platform of restoring fiscal stability, and they won. The American people support that. Uh, and three, uh, the, 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 this committee is putting for, forward a plan for the consideration of Congress. And that's where I have real uh, it, questions about the wisdom of the plan that's been put forward. We do have to get our fiscal house in order. The only way we're going to accomplish that goal is by putting everything on the table. It means that defense has to be on the table. It means tax expenditures have to be on the table. It means line items in the appropriation bill have to be on the table. Uh, and it means uh, that we cannot continue to pay uh, for wars on the credit card. The way we're going right now is that we're trying to attack the problem to get 100% of the solution by focusing on 12% of the budget, the non-defense discretionary spending. And it means that the decisions that are being asked of Congress are basically uh, to do such things as to cut low-income heating assistance, cut back on scholarships uh, for students that are trying to get ahead, uh, to cut back uh, uh, on economic development aid uh, that is essential to our communities, to cut back on community development block grants, all of these are legitimate questions, but if the goal, if the goal of this committee is the stated goal, and that is to restore fiscal solvency to this country, then the only way we can be successful is by putting every element of the budget on the table. And that, as I mentioned, is defense, it's entitlements, uh, it's tax expenditures. The proposal that we're dealing with in Congress right now has two problems with it. Number one, it will fail. It will fail in achieving the goals that the Budget Committee majority states is its goal, and that's to restore fiscal stability to this country. It happens to be a goal I share. We have a chance of getting from here to there if we put everything on the table so that those tough choices that we have to make about eliminating government inefficiencies, by eliminating tax breaks that no longer have any economic value, any growth potential. If we put everything on the table, we have a chance of succeeding together. Everything is not on the table now, and that is going to guarantee failure. That's my major criticism of what we're doing in the budget. Second, we are starting down a road of playing Russian roulette with the American economy, and we are on the brink of doing real damage. There are many in this body who are suggesting that we should stiff the American uh, cre uh, creditors of the, of, of the American government by saying no on extending the debt limit. I believe that's reckless and it's irresponsible and it's a politically loaded decision that will do great harm to this country. My view is that we've got to acknowledge the obvious and that is America pays its bills. Extending the debt limit is not about incurring new obligations, it's <clears throat> about honoring past obligations. Some under Democratic administrations, some under Republican administrations. And it's true that we have many debates about what the shape and form of the budget should be, but those debates should be resolved in the budget. We should not use the debt limit ceiling as a hostage uh, that is going to have real consequences, detrimental consequences to American families and American workers. So my view, we should be in agreement to support a continuation of the debt limit on a clean extension, not to use that as political leverage to get your position or ours. <clears throat> we can get to where we need to be, but not if we have a, uh, an approach on the budget that limits what we can consider. I mean, why is it that we continue tax breaks for oil companies that are doing well, a trillion dollars in profits in the past 10 years? Why is it? Uh, that Goldman Sachs paid 1.1% of its income in taxes, even though it had a profit. This is in, in 2008 of $2.3 billion and received courtesy of the American taxpayer and the Federal Reserve in the form of subsidized interest rates, $800 billion. Those types of, of, of distortions have to be part of our discussion. If we consider everything, we can succeed in achieving your stated goal of restoring fiscal stability to this country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Welch. I appreciate that. Um, 
for what it's worth, I'll speak very briefly to your point on the on the budget. I think you'll be